Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God's God, kingdom, kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Well, today is the start of the second Sunday of Advent. And we're on the second candle of peace. Tonight's all about peace. It is also called the Bethlehem candle. God kept his promise of a saviour who would be born in Bethlehem. His birth would bring peace to the world. John wrote in his letter, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, do not be afraid. You should have a hymn book, a uh, prayer book. Uh, we are moving to the prayer book. If you are wanting to keep the prayer book you are using, just keep it with your hymn books uh, and leave it in the pews. Otherwise, leave it on the bench when you leave and it will be kept separate for at least two, two weeks before it will be used again. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. All people shall see it together. Let's begin by bringing our feet up standing. As we begin the service, let us bring our hearts and our minds to God in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and totally magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. During Advent, we only say the Tricentian on page 121 at number 10. Let's say it together. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and have mercy on us. And the colleague prayer. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus. Christ our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says the, your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the dead wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. 
The rough ground shall become level. The rugged places are plain. The glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Hear the word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is on the sheet of paper inside your service sheet. Psalm 85, 1 to 2 and 8 to 13. Let us read together. Lord, you were favourable to your land. You restored the fountains of Jacob. You forgave the inequities of your people. You pardon the blessing. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a part for his steps. second reading is from the second letter of Peter, chapter 3, beginning verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The day of the Lord will be like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth, everything done in it, be laid there. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth 
where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and peaceful. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. Hear the word of the Lord. Please be outstanding for the gospel. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts while hunting. This was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my lips and meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God and Redeemer. So last week we started at the end of Mark's Gospel talking about the last parts of Jesus' life and today we jump back to the beginning of Mark and here we don't start with his birth, we start with the life of John the Baptist. We're talking about peace. What has this got to do with peace? You know, we don't know how long John was preaching before Jesus started his ministry at the age of 30. We know that John was six months younger than Jesus, and we assume that they came about the same time. But John lived in the wilderness. He wore clothes made of camel hair with only a rope around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. Why does Mark tell us this? What does it matter what he wore? What does it matter what he ate? For me, John represents a man who is at peace. He doesn't care about what he wears. He doesn't care what he eats. He doesn't care what people think of him. What he cares about is that the Lord is coming. His whole focus, his whole purpose of life is to be prepared for the coming of his Lord. Peter writes in his letter, be patient. He talks about God's patience, God's life. One day in God's time is like a thousand for us. So really, it's only been two days since Jesus died. And why is God waiting? Because God wants everybody to have an opportunity to give their life to Jesus and to God. God is patient. And you know, 
To be patient, you need to be at peace with what's happening. You know, peace is not something someone gives us. It's something that we have come to understand. To put life in perspective. To not expect things that are going to disappoint us. Take away our peace. What takes away your peace? Someone's words, someone else's actions. Are you prepared for Christ's coming? Are you at peace with whatever happens in the world, knowing that it doesn't matter? Because God's plan is happening. And even if it takes another 20 days in God's terms, which means that 20,000 years of our time, God's promise will be fulfilled. That's what matters. In that we find peace with the rest of the world. Come, and in your mercy, 
We wait, O oh God, for your glory to be revealed. For the good news that salvation is at hand. We pray for your church throughout the world. The leaders of churches in this land. For the clergy and people of this parish. For prophets who call your church to repentance today. Bring our parish prayer to you. Renew in us, O God, the zeal for your love. Let our parish come alive with the power of your spirit. Where we have failed, forgive us. Where we have persevered, encourage us. Where we are in doubt, direct us. Help us to see new opportunities for witness and service. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Speak salvation to your church, O God. Come and in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We wait, O God, for your glory to be revealed. For the Christmas message of reconciliation and love. We pray for our community, for our homes and our neighbours. For our schools, our hospitals, for our workplaces. We pray for all the children who are finishing school at this time this time break from education. Speak tenderly to your people, O oh God. Come, and in your mercy, we will hear our prayer. We wait, O oh God, for your glory to be revealed, for good news of healing, wholeness, Pray for all in need of your comfort and care. For those whom we neglect, those who cannot care for themselves. For those without resources, for those without hope. For the sick, of sorrow. We bring those of our loved ones and friends who are in need of your healing. We give special prayers for Peg Matthews, Suzanne, Robin, Hershel Hoyser, Anne Howe, Baby Oden, Peter Tranter, Jill Daniels, Brett, Bill Henderson, Damien Bale, Patricia McMullen, Cannon, and Peter Tordeman. Speak comfort to your people, O oh God. Come, and in your mercy, you know. We wait, O oh God, for your glory to be revealed with all your saints. We wait to hear the words, Behold your God. We give you thanks for your prophets of old for all who call us to follow your ways of righteousness and peace. We remember this week Wendy Lindsay, Michael McGaw, Margaret Bundy, 
Thomas Dawson, Henny Tan Wan, Daphne Long, Jean Jefferson, Maxine Anderson, and Alan Paul. May we repent of all that is displeasing in your sight, that with your faithful people of ages past, we may be gathered into the joy of your presence. Inhabitants of a new heaven, the new earth, come quickly to your people, O God. Come, and in your mercy, and do our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Let us prepare for our confession through the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trust in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are unworthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. The Lord comes, bringing to light things now hidden in darkness, and Disclosing the purposes of the heart. Let us open our hearts and prepare for his coming, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we yes. have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We, we repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through to Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be upstanding for greeting and peace. We understand God's timing. We understand our peace. We are the body of Christ. Peace and love of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God, we give you thanks for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ who was looked for by the prophets, heralded by the Baptist, announced by an angel, born of the Virgin Mary, and revealed at last to men and women of every race. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin, and obtain an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And be seated or kneel for the rest of the communion. And now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, as Jesus said, Share his body and his blood. On the night of his betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. You have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all he has done for us. Fill us with your spirit that we may follow Jesus in all we do and say, working for justice and bringing your peace to this world that you have made. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For 
we all share in the one. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us. Feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, we thank you that you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. As we joyfully await the come of your Son, keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before him on the day of his coming. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Please be outstanding for the greeting after the blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and make you ready to meet him when he comes in his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go with peace and joy and hope to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.